All right, welcome back. It's still VOP this morning and uh, time for us to delve into uh, one of the focal points for today. I have with me uh, Esther Wachiku. Good morning, Esther. Good morning, Moses. How are you? Very well, thank you. It's TGIF, baby. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is TGIF. <laughs> and uh, we are expecting prayers in our mailbox, uh, mailboxes uh, before the end of the show. It's, it's, it's important, actually. I, it's an emergency. It's needed for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. All right, so the Economic Community of West African States has directed the deployment of standby military troops to restore constitutional order in the Niger Republic. Now, ECOWAS gave the directive on Thursday at the end of its second extraordinary meeting held in Abuja to address the political crisis in Niger. The resolve is to deploy force and comes days after the military junta in Niger defied the ECOWAS deadline to reinstate ousted President Mohamed Bazoum. The regional bloc had threatened the use of force as a last option if the Nigerian military authorities remain a recalcitrant to one week from the ECOWAS first meeting, which was held on July 30. In his opening remarks at the second extraordinary meeting of the organization, President Bola Tunibri said the political crisis in Niger not only poses a threat to the stability of the nation, but also has far-reaching implications for the entire West African region. Now, joining us virtually in VAP this morning to talk about this is a legal practitioner, Eze Eluche, as well as a political author, Zez, and John Akirili, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to VOP this morning. Good morning and thank you for having me. Thank you. Years. Thank you, Barrister Eze. So, would, would, would you say the resolve yesterday by the ECOWAS community to, you know, put the military force on standby to reinstate uh, President Bazoum of Niger, would you say you expected this? Well, considering that um, in real sense, ECOWAS is what you can refer to as a president's club, not a people's club. What they are doing now, what some of the members of ECOWAS, not all members of ECOWAS, are doing is expected. Why is it some members of ECOWAS? ECOWAS, right from its treaty, from its inception, has always acted with unanimity. Yes, it's that all these parties have to agree on a course of action. That is what the treaty says. So in this instance now, you have some presidents of ECOWAS are making this decision because rightly, presidents of um, Niger Republic, Mali, Burkina Faso are, are not part of whatever is going on there. So what is going on is expected. And when you look at the caliber of people who are making these decisions, it gives goose bumps. Hmm. It's just for echoes. One of them is the president of Senegal, Macky Sall. He's been there for since 2012. That's between um, 11 years. In there as president, he tried to extend his stay. He tried to do a constitutional in Senegal. People opposed him. Many have died, and he has recently put his opposition, the opposition leader in Senegal, in jail on a trumped up charge of rape. The other people are this someone like Alassane Patara, the president of um, um, Cote d'Ivoire. He's been there for over uh, 13 years, 81 years old. He's the one talking about democracy. In Cote d'Ivoire, you don't even have democracy. You don't have freedom of several things. The other person is even our own Bolatino, who we know the process through which he passed through his elections. The cases are still in court. There have been elements of dictatorial uh, tendencies spewing up. So these are the characters who are saying ECOWAS is doing this, ECOWAS is. For the public information, ECOWAS is not doing anything. You have some rulers in FTF member state countries who are championing this cause for a friend of theirs who has been removed. When ECOWAS acts, we will know. The Treaty of ECOWAS, that is the fundamental, the fundamental document which guide, binds ECOWAS, is, states clearly in Article 4D that members undertake to, to never be in aggression, a non-binding treaty, non-aggression to member states treaty. It's, en it's enshrined in the ECOWAS Treaty. So under what basis, under what capacity is this few leaders, few rulers in ECOWAS taking the you know, um, Niger Republic? So please, let us use the proper context. It is not ECOWAS that is doing this. It is some rulers in ECOWAS countries who are trying to go and rescue their member. 
let me before I, I leave the, the stage, one of the, if you go through the 12 points communicate, which they reeled out after their meeting in Abuja, you will not see anywhere in that communicate where the people. All right, unfortunately, we have a network glitch there, and uh, uh, I would love to hear um, Barista Eze Eluche's point there. Uh, so we'll just uh, Moses, wait would bit. you say it's actually surprising for what is transpiring right now? You remember that when President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the ECOWAS chair, gave a seven day ultimatum, eventually the seven day ultimatum elapsed. We didn't hear anything. A couple of persons actually referred to him as possibly spineless because you gave a seven-day ultimatum and you did not do anything well but it's not for him to do anything actually it's for uh, he's only the president of ECOWAS he can't mm -hmm. do anything without so why why did you declare an, a military body? invasion on an independent nation without going through the due process because at the moment I what feel is the, due? the due process was like he was meant to have a deliberation with Senate they come out to resolve if with they the would Senate. approve yes the Senate all right, if, we have if, John Akirili um, on standby. Good morning to you, John. Good morning to you, Moses. Good morning to you, Esther. Good morning to the people. Good morning, Adrian. Morning. All right, John, we're talking about uh, the standby force that ECOWAS has, you know, has uh, activated um, for uh, to observe things going on in Niger and probably, you know, swing into action if, the junta in Niger refuses to do what ECOWAS is asking. But right now, there has been uh, a military president in Niger. What does that, how does that affect the position of ECOWAS? Thank you for that question, Moses. I, I think it's important that, you know, that we give a background to this story so that our viewers can have a proper understanding and they can have informed decisions. The story goes by. Um, there is a continent, Africa, there is a sub-region, the world state, and that's where you have the ECOWAS, and Africa, you know, supervises the whole of Africa. But in this case, we also have leaders of different West African countries who have come up to make up ECOWAS, and which is the, one of their agenda is growth of the region. So the question we should ask, Riga, is that have we seen economic growth over the years? And that's a question to be answered by the so-called uh, uh, member states. Now, let's also look at what is happening at the global stage in terms of Russia-Ukraine um, war, which is indirectly Russia-NATO crisis. And if you look at this, Africa is also a stakeholder in terms of global affairs. And that's why um, the Western allies are looking for a way to break Africa into regions for and against, so that in case there is a World War III, I suppose, is coming. Uh, different parties that will catch their attempts either to Party A or to Party B. And also, there's also uh, a case of um, imperialist, uh, you know, where the people feel like they are still being colonized, even after getting independence from their colonial masters. And if you look at the likes of the uh, Ninja, which is right. Uranium. Look at the amount of uranium that has been exported out of the country and look at the economic realities in Niger. Look at the level of poverty in Niger. Look at the level of uneducated uh, people in, in Niger. You, you, you cannot really look at natural resources that region and the daily life of the people and say equal. And so this neglect and negligence that have passed over the land in some, over the years. And that's some of the effects you are seeing that people are actually reacting to. So for me, um, coming up to say that there's going to be a military standby as, as a region, why? Because Niger, in particular, is a strategic country which is very, very key in terms of counter-terrorism or anti-terrorism fights of the West. And looking at Nigeria, having our issues with the, our Israel and our Boko Haram, knowing fully well that we across about several states or not, okay, and also having a border with Burkina Faso and Benin Republic, which also is also with us. So if there's an implosion in Niger as as women, it means that about seven African countries will be affected. And largely, Nigeria will take a large chunk of the million of people in Niger because of the seven 
is not a part of the financial system. And then that will be humanitarian crisis. But what do that is more importantly is that a show of force should not come in. Rather, diplomacy, diplomacy, and diplomacy. Um, as we link political elites all across the West African states, failed the people. Yes, they are failed. And the result of a failed government is when you see a, a coup d'etat, and you see the people jubilating for a coup d'etat. You know, that, 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 that sends a very strong signal. Mm. And that shows that, like the lawyer is saying, the minister is saying, that the people, ECOWAS member. These are ECOWAS, these are people who are fighting for the personal interest. I think they are ECOWAS members because um, even though the election is being contested, we have the president today and Sir Nabila Ahmed Tinubu, even though and say the court determines otherwise. But I think action, military action is not the way to go. Rather, um Sanusi Lamido Sanusi has been to Ninji and he was granted audience. And it shows that there also there is a, 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 a case of mistrust between even the co-leaders and Nigeria as, as an entity. So if they cannot trust the likes of Abdul Salam and, and the Sultan that went to, you know, they couldn't give them audience to the likes of Sanusi Lamido Anybody who can have the listening ear of the co-leaders is what Nigeria as a country should, you know, explore what avenue so that we can have diplomacy. And then we can have these full uh, plans and you know itineraries on how they can switch you know power back to civilian rule. And when it comes back to civilian rule, let people, let the people by the people and for the people, because all we have in Africa is not the government of the people by the people for the people, but the government of some some few for some few for themselves and their friends. All right, uh, John, so apparently in reaction to ECOWAS's decision yesterday, uh, Anthony Blinken, you know, gave a resolve saying that he actually appreciate ECOWAS coming together and making a decision to have a military standby force. However, he advised that every other peaceful option to resolve the situation in Niger and reinstating Bazoum should, should be explored. But at the moment, do you think that Niger is open for dialogue? Do you think that they're open to reinstate Bazoom, considering the initial uh, response of uh, the, the of ECOWAS community to visit them at the time, and they literally cut ties with the ECOWAS community. So, do you think Niger is open for any form of dialogue now? I, I think I think we should look at it from the two different warring factions. Okay. Looking at it from the faction of Niger and the coup leaders, is that they are seeing a kind of you know disenfranchisement. They, they are seeing exploitation. They are saying that their people are not really getting the true dividend of democracy. They say that their citizens are being treated and they live in abject poverty over the years, despite the enormous amount of money that they keep hearing mm. on news that comes into the country. But they could not see it physically, you know, in manifest as to the economic realities. And so they have their own issue on that angle. On the other angle, uh, also, is having their own issue. But I think what, what, what is more important there should be a timetable, you know, when coup happens. Because that's let's check our history, even in Africa. In Nigeria, we've had eight times. Um, in Ghana, I think about 10 times, if my memory starts me right. We should look at how were they able to transit from, you know, the coup even to back to civilian regime. It's not something that happened within seven days. So I think ECOWAS should be more realistic and not come up with seven days on Timetum or show of force. If there is a show of force from ECOWAS as a region, don't forget also that a country like Burkina Faso, a country like Mali, you know, we want to give a country like we want to give a, 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 a support, you know, a backing to likes of because they see Niger as an ally now. Why? Because they have also had a successful coup. If that is happening, you see that you are building a section of the of the ECOWAS region against another ECOWAS. So there's division in ECOWAS, and if there's division in ECOWAS. That is also an avenue for um, the Westerners to come in. Maybe Russia will take uh, the, the military, that's why the US will take the civilian assets. And that's also a problem for Africa. So we should not get to that stage where there will be implosion in Africa through Niger. But why did it? Why did ECOWAS not try? You know, especially with uh, what transpired in Sudan, what transpired in Burkina Faso, as well as um, you know other uh, West African countries that are being predominated by the military administration. What was ECOWAS' response at the time? And then the question that Nigeria is asking is: You allowed these other you know countries surrounding us to go ahead and continue with your military uh, regime. So why? What exactly is your interest with us? Why can't you let us be? So the question was, what Thank happened you. with ECOWAS at the time? 
Esther, thank you for that question. And so this is it. You know, when there's been an act of negligence and irresponsibility on the part of leaders over time, and that's what's happening. So I think the ECHO has never responded when the case of Burkina Faso, you know, came up, the case of Mali came up. And so when they saw, I think this is becoming a trend, and it is happening in which shares a close border with Nigeria, it shows that it's going to have a, a strong influence coming down to the Sahel, you know? And so that is a very strong indicator that I think you guys are sleeping as ECOWAS leaders, so you need to wake up to your responsibility. And you know that if you don't wake up to your responsibility now and tackle this issue of coal in Niger, it's going to have an aftermath on other countries, in, in a case like Benin. So if Niger can go on that successful coup and then nothing was, nothing is being you know, there's no resistance. It can also come into Cameroon, it can come into the Republic, and you see that Nigeria is actually, you know, enclosed with military um, officers as, as rulers of the country, and that will portray the very, very danger force. Mind you, we're also having our own internal crisis in terms of Iswa and Boko Haram. And so, there's a joint uh, task force between Nigeria and Niger, and even the lecture, an effort to combat this. So, if this we, there's a division between us in that regard. It, it, it portends more danger for us as a country, and it's not good. So I think Ecuador, on, on, on the other hand, have been a docile leader, and I think now they are waking up to their responsibility. But even in waking up to their responsibility, they should not go in the way of force, rather they go in the way of diplomacy. Since they are talking about democracy, democracy is not a show of force, rather negotiation, when they come to a roundtable discussion, and everybody can bring up their then they can be for and against. We can shift ground. They also shift their ground. And then we'll come to a middle point where we can come to a point of agreement. So I think um, they also should show in their statements as ECOWAS that they are being democratic in their approach and not being authoritarian, like they are accusing the uh, co leaders in Niger. So I think it's from both sides. They should look at it as the most interests are we doing this. The co leaders are doing it in the interest of Nigeria, and Nigerians are in full support of them. Now, the ECOWAS leader should also. Make sure that the people, the populace, see them in the light that they are also fighting their own cause rather than fighting the personal cause. I think for most of Nigerians now, they see it as a cause for ECOWAS to fight for the one of their own, not for the real people of Niger. And that is a problem. So that impression needs to be corrected, and then table should be created for negotiation, more negotiation and more negotiation come to Point of agreement. So for me, I think one thing they should do is to ask the military director, what is your timetable? What is your plan for Nigerian people? So do you intend to hand over or you know to have a transition government? Look at it. The, the, the military director already have, have a cabinet. You know, that shows that exactly. they, they are moving on with their plans. They don't even care what Equa has got to do. So but right, Equa should you know engage with them. How long do you want to hold on to power? Is it six months? Is it one year? Is it one and a half year? And then they can come to the point that okay, we are giving you eight months. Within eight months, let's see how we can conduct a good and credible election within the people. And then the option of the president, that's uh, Bazoum, can also be challenging on that table discussion. One is that will Bazoum be allowed to contest as a presidential candidate again? That's one. If he will be allowed to be contest to contest the election, fine. If he will not be allowed to be to contest the election, that's going to be discussed because. Now the people do not even trust Bazoum as a president. Rather, they see Bazoum as a focus for the Western and allies of uh, Niger in terms of exploiting their natural resources. And so these are some of the areas I think they should look in and see how they can come to a point of agreement on the table of this negotiation. All right, so I want to believe we still have uh, Barista Eze Eluche with us. Barista Eze, are you with us? Okay, I, I think we've... Uh, We've uh, not been able to reconnect with Barrister Eze Eluche. So I'm going to stay with John on this one. Now, John, um, first, firstly, and quickly too, was Nigeria or was ECOWAS hasty? Or better, uh, be, uh, better put, was Nigeria hasty in closing its airspace and closing its borders to Niger? Was that a very hasty decision? Yes, John? yes. I, I think um, if you look at the speech of Mr. President when he assumed the position of the chairmanship okay. of uh, ECOWAS, and he, he, he re echoed the issue of coup, I think he saw that coming, you know. Mm. And so after the inauguration in May, in May, you see that coup happened in July 26, about um, two months down the line after the inauguration. And so it, it, it's more of a very hasty 
it's more of a reaction. Yeah. If it's a if it's a hasty you know? decision, how will it affect negotiations going forward? Now it will affect negotiation because in this case now the the the, the other party do not seem to trust um, Nigerian party in this regard. Mm -hmm. You know, at first you have issued threat to me, and after you have issued threat to me, you cannot meet them. And if I don't comply, you are going to shut me down. You are going to you know black me out. You are going to you know give me all sort of sanctions. And after all, you have given that threat to me, you are not bringing a table of negotiation. So on mm -hmm. what? Meter or what on what indices are we negotiating on when you have issued threat to me? And when you say the seven days of meter is passed and nothing has happened, and now you, you are coming back to negotiate. So I think the fourth thing should have been negotiation instead of that sanction. Now look at it. Uh, Mr. President is coming barely new on this on this on this on this uh, on this chair. But other people have been there, the likes of um, the president of uh, Cote d'Ivoire. You know, it's been there for over, over, over eight years. And these are people who, if you check their own country, they've not really given the democracy to their people. And they are coming, you know, to foster that leadership on, on our own president. Let me not lie to you. The bulk of the funding for ECOWAS joint military force that they want to use is coming from Nigeria. Yeah. And it's at this time that we are cry, crying that we don't have enough resources to take care of our own internal security challenges and want to expend some money, you know, to take care of other people's challenges. I think the president should 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 sit down and should have his own cabinet. And at this point in time, the NIA should you know swing into action and bring the president properly on give uh, intelligence gathering and give him proper things on how to go about it. Looking at what has happened in previous years, looking at past record, looking at past experiences, looking at past histories, and they can draw inferences as to making further decisions. So I think the two is rather they should you know pipe down a little bit. And even when other African leaders are pushing Mr. President to take actions, he should also tell him, tell them that he's a man of his word, he knows what he's doing, and he needs time not to be hasty in taking decisions. Because any decision you take, we either make or mark. So if you look at the indices that I've, that I've outlined earlier, um, it, it, it potents a great danger for us as a country, Nigeria, if we go the military route. Because if we go the military route, then we are seeing a whole lot of IDP camps popping up in the north. And if the north is not settled, you are sure that the south and the southeast or the south south we also said interesting don't, don't forget that the south is also have their own security challenges so mm. it just make a, a, a chaotic country economically will not be stable and then we have a problem on our hands that we can't even show interesting right, okay. and we do have uh, idp camps already in nigeria occupied by by nigerians that have been displaced so getting a uh, uh you know um displaced people from uh neighboring countries will not augur well for Nigeria indeed. But now, let's look at this now. A school of thought has it that uh, they might not need, I mean, ECOWAS may not need to actually invade Niger because there's been a, a reactivation of an ex-rebel uh, leader, Risa Agbuala, who was, who was actually a, a minister of tourism in Niger during the regime of a coupist president now he has formed what he calls the council for um, resistance for the republic and you know that's the first internal resistance that they are getting some would say he has been reactivated by powers that be to 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 stand against the military that have taken power how do you see this playing out well, I, I think what what just asked me the same case of uh, Sunday Bugu, who was not arrested in Nigeria but was arrested in Benin Republic, and government have claimed that they have, they have no hands in that is case. I shall answer to the Benin Republic government. Same thing is happening here. So they are using what we call the internal mechanism, you know, using it one of you to fight your own in your own country, so that there, there will be no issue of foreign interference or westernization of the crisis and so it's, it's a case of using one of their own you know which is being sponsored and the, by, by the powers that be that for us for sure is a part and if you look at some of the powers that be um the france and the us will not be taken out of contest in this conversation likewise nigeria as the giant of africa will also not be taken out of contest don't forget also that the us is ECOWAS standing and the ECOWAS standing likely is nigerian standing and so if there's a backing from that that shows that a part of the the western uh, world is actually giving support to ECOWAS indirectly 
And so it means that if there are opposition within Niger itself, it shows that some of these people will also give support to and so that there can be confusion in the land. And it's that there's some Nigerians are saying we want civilian rule. Some Nigerians are saying we want the military rule. So it's it's now a case of what do we do between these two? And that cannot be the basis for bringing in intervention, either from ECOWAS or from the US or from France. Don't forget also that these countries also have their own military bases. In Niger, I think one in Miami and the other one in the north of Niger. And so these, these are a question that we should ask ourselves. Why the, the, the location of bases in Niger? How come they spend so much millions of dollars in terms of foreign aid, in terms of military equipment and all of that, but less in terms of so these are questions that are begging for answers and they are yet to be answered. All right, so uh, Niger has already formed a new government. And that's based on a decree that was announced on their national television yesterday. Now, they have a prime minister whose name is Ali Mahaman Lamin Ziyang. He will lead a 21-member government with generals from the new military governing council heading the defense and interior ministries. The reason why I'm asking this question is, it seems that the coupists have the support of the people. That's one. They really do not care about most of the sanctions placed on them. For example, the uh, Nigerians block them from having access to their seaports. They cannot have any access to any form of trade or relationship with us. The borders have been closed. These are impeding sanctions. They have stopped giving them electricity and whatever it is that they have a relation with. But obviously, the Nigerians do not care because for them, they already anticipated that these sanctions would be imposed. But going forward, with the Nigerian, uh, with ECOWAS saying that they're going to put a military force on standby, how long will they be on standby? And if Niger does not want to have negotiations as they have severed their ties with ECOWAS, then what happens? What next? Will the ECOWAS just stay put in, in, in order for there to be no war because definitely the economic implications in this part of the world will be detrimental. What then? What's next? I think Nigeria should be very, very careful because Nigeria is like a big brother to the whole of Africa, not even in ECOWAS region alone. And so our decisions we either make or not. Don't forget that we are the most populous black nation. And so even in Africa, there's no other country that can withstand us in terms of our population. Mm. And so we should be careful because any decision we make will you know, disrupt the whole of Sahel region. Now, if Niger, that shows that we have a kind of a set of people who are, who are determined, you know, to break from this um, colonial rule, mm. you know, and they, they are determined, and the people are with them, and that is where it is even more complicated. It's a complex situation in Niger right now because when the people are with the co leaders, then on what side are you? That's the question they're asking the, the so called ECOWAS. And even with France and the US, because that's what they're asking. If you are saying yourself, but the people want this. So it, it's a bit dicey for you to, to come in that regard. Now, when you bring up sanctions that are severe to such a country, don't forget also that Nigeria and Niger had uh, you know, a treaty in terms of our dam and power generation and that would supply the electricity. And that was, you know, was taken out for uh, as one of the sanctions. So the, the larger part of Niami now does not have electricity because Niger supplies over 60 percent of electricity to them. And so that alone shows that you have sent a very strong signal that you are against the, the coup, that you are against the and, and, and that's the signal. So they now are looking at how they can live their life outside your support, outside supplies from you, and how they can view themselves. And if that should go on, is that um, the security threats, you know, coming from Libya all through the Sahel, who proliferation of, of small arms and what that tends was that there is going to be an increase and our northern region will not be a safe zone for us and if that is a safe zone for us nigeria as a whole will be in crisis because it will trickle down to other region of of, of 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 the country and so i think we should not go that route and we should not also fall into the uh, nato and russia crisis let them let, let's allow them to deal with their crisis and also the people are saying that one of the narration military uh, John that are selling to the people is the fact that he thought of Burkina Faso in his speech. He has a very serious question. And the question is what happens to the uranium all of the year that I exploded from, from Niger? You know, what happens to the oil from Nigeria? 
and all of that, you know, these are questions that are talking about economic gains that they should gain from democracy. But over the years, they've not seen that happen. Rather, they've seen their people being impoverished. And this is part of the thing that I think ECOWAS, you know, should ask their leaders and be sincere to themselves that if truly you are a leader, you have been leading your country for 11 years, and there's no significant improvement when it comes to livelihood of the people, then you have failed as a leader. You have failed. And so it, it, the same thing is happening in Nigeria when doing one project, what that he built, you know, you see a minister who, the, who has been alleged to have had misconduct or mis misappropriation of funds, and he will still come with the uh, only Bible. And that is not the case. And then instead of him to even resign, he will still go to court on, on, on something that is reasonable. You know, so it, it's a problem with Africa. And, and until Africa, I guess we point out, understand that Africa can save Africa. And Africa is not in foreign aid to save Africa. And that's right. what the president of Burkina Faso is saying. And I think. Mm -hmm. We should also throw that line, but we should be careful because mm -hmm. the 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 of having um, a military intervention in Niger uh, is, is disastrous. If we go that line, all right, John. Nigeria, what, 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 what happens to President Bazoum? He's still in custody. They're still holding him hostage. So if the Nigerians are already in support of the coupists, well, it's obvious that they like him. So why don't they release the president, possibly send him on exile, whatever it is, you've already deposed him, so let him go. Why, why are they still guarding him at the presidential palace? Now, the, that is where ECOWAS ought to have come in, in terms of the negotiation on the table. You know, that should have been part of the discussion. You know, apart from the timetable of when you would transit into civilian rule, also what can happen to the president that, that, that is deposed. Are you also guaranteeing us a safety? Because these are some of the, you know, the, the indexes you bring to the table of negotiation. So the military Utah will say that, yes, this is what we need to do. So in, even, not, even not only about the security, it's also about his re-election bid. Will he also be allowed to contest election when they are transited into the election period for the civilian rule? But I think the COAS, you know, entourage ought to have bring up to the table of negotiation rather than just training sanctions at a poor country, which is just less than 25 million people. And that's not even up, up to Lagos State. So I think uh, that is just high-handedness. And even though I'm, I'm against school, and I believe that democracy is the, is, is the only we can go by, and democracy is the best option for us as a system of government in the whole of Africa. But then people should feel the impact of democracy so that we can truly say we have developed as a continent, not this that we are seeing right now. All right, then. Thank you very much, John Akerile. But we'd like for you to stay with us as we go on to another topic, of course. Uh, um, up next, a uh, warrant of arrest on Harun Akolo, a former staff of Federal, Cap uh, Federal Character Commission, FCC, and the IPPIS desk officer over selling of job slots. Well, details when we return. <laughs> 